Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, said just today, there will be a smooth transition into a second Trump administration, confident that once all of the legal votes are counted and the illegal votes that dilute your vote are discounted, Donald Trump will be the president. Right now, we are in a propaganda war. Governments are built upon confidence of their people. And make no mistake, what we are watching is a struggle for power. I'm not going to tell you who is right or wrong, but I will tell you, based on the information you receive, you will likely draw that conclusion. The left, of course, is being inundated with story after story about president-elect Joe Biden from the mainstream media. However, right-wing individuals tend not to trust the mainstream media, and they get their news from conservative news outlets or right-wing outlets. Now, certainly there are some right-leaning outlets that have basically said, Trump, it's just about over, and even mocked him. There is still a massive media apparatus that exists through social media and other smaller websites saying straight up, we've got evidence of fraud. Now, the propaganda war. New York Times is saying, look at all of this misinformation. Uh Uh-oh. People pointed out those stories of fraud are actually true. Well, we know they're true, but the way they're being framed, the way they're being framed. Look, I think in all likelihood, this ends with a Joe Biden presidency, because that seems to be the most, I don't know, normal outcome. But I can't tell you for sure. Lawsuits are underway. And to act like this is going to be a clean sweep would be ridiculous. The GOP is now starting to form ranks behind Trump. Mitch McConnell saying when the process is certified and we have a certified winner, then the election is over. I don't know if this means that any one of these Republicans will actually stand up and defend Trump because Republicans typically just want to be liked by the press, which you may have noticed by now. Republicans will bend over backwards, most of the leadership, to try and look good on TV and seem reasonable. And the Democrats will go to war saying insane things like Trump is working with Russia. For years, they did that. But the Republicans, heavens, they got to look good, don't they? I'm not entirely convinced Trump will get the support he needs for his propaganda uh, for, on, on, during this propaganda war. But what I will tell you is that Trump is making assertions. He's got his legal arguments. They're decent arguments. It's a pretty crazy scenario to be in. It's, it's, it's a crazy circumstance that Trump is trying to say that mail-in votes are effectively not being treated equally and thus should be disqualified, mostly because there were no observers to check whether they were legit or not. Thus, they're spoiled. And we have the media just saying over and over and over President-elect Joe Biden, President-elect Joe Biden, trying to get us back to that normalcy from the previous elections where the transition teams would form and then the president-elect would just come in because the media called it. But my friends, the media isn't the arbiter of an election. The certification process is. I think it's fair to say that because we are in a hotly polarized and contested election cycle where neither candidate won overwhelmingly, we need to calm down, not call this for Joe Biden or otherwise, and make it to the certification process once we've gone through everything. And guess what? Real clear politics is saying just that. The election should not have been called for Joe Biden. Why was it, in my opinion? It is a propaganda war. Not that I'm saying it's a grand conspiracy or anything, but you have journalists that work in this industry saying that's it. The AP called it. This is a fact. And I refuse to believe otherwise. There is a clash over what is truly real. In the end, the winner of this election is going to be the person that convinces enough people to get behind them. And that, my friends, is a really scary prospect. But I'll tell you, Joe Biden's got the massive multinational media complex. He's got big media, big business, big tech, all of that stuff behind him. And the official results came in from the AP. And as we traditionally do, that's typically how we determine who the winner is. But I'll tell you, this is going to be a tough one because I'm reading all of this news and there's no longer a shared reality at all. Like we could agree on certain facts, but at this point it is just absolute insanity. Conspiracies are starting to pop up. We'll see how things play out. But let me read for you the news and I'll go through exactly what's going on. And uh, we'll get started with what Mike Pompeo said about there's going to be a second Trump administration. 
Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you would like to support my work. There's a P.O. box if you want to send me some stuff and many other ways. But the best thing you can do, actually, share this video. Look, here's what I want to try and do. I want to try and show you exactly what's going on and be as real and honest as possible about this whole circumstance. If you go to many right wing channels, you'll probably just hear Trump, you know, there's fraud, there's impropriety. Trump won. They stole the election. I'm hearing conspiracies about people's maiden names and about dead people voting and stuff. The dead people voting thing does seem to be legit. There's, There's several instances of circumstantial evidence of that being the case. Anyway, the point is, now, I'm not trying to impugn anyone's honor here, but I'm going to show you mainstream narrative, constitutional crisis. Trump is trying to steal the election. He's lost. There's no way he can win. And Trump supporters and conservatives, the election is being stolen. Stop the steal, they say. I'll do my best. But if you think I do a good job, please consider sharing this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Here's the first story. Many people are wondering why Pompeo said this. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo battled reporters over President Trump's refusal to accept the results of the presidential election, predicting there will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration, despite the fact that Joe Biden is the projected winner of the race. My friends, this is what I mean by propaganda war. Take a look. Joe Biden is the projected winner. Why would they say accept the results if the results are not in? Okay. In 2016, when Donald Trump was the projected winner at the end of the night, and it was very close, ridiculously close, by about 80,000 votes in many states, Hillary Clinton could have called for a recount in some of these places. She didn't do it. Honestly, I don't know why. She might have done a recount. I'm not entirely sure. But within 48 hours, Trump was meeting with Obama, was in the White House, and they had conceded the race. Even though I think Trump won state, I think like by like 0.2%, some very, very small margin, they conceded. Many people are saying, see, that's what, uh, you know, the, the Obama administration, or Hillary Clinton conceded and the Obama administration had this meeting with Trump, whereas right now, Trump is actually saying no to transition. They're saying, look what happens when it's the Democrats to Trump. They say, we're going to work with you. Now that it's Trump, Trump's saying no. Okay. And 2016 was a very, uh, you know, very close race. I think it's a fair point. I'm not going to pretend that Trump is a man of great moral character. He's a he's a dude who said, I win. And on election night, declared himself the victor. And now in 2020, when it's looking for Joe Biden, Trump says, no, I'm going all the way, baby. This is why people probably voted for Trump. He's not going to roll over. He's going to fight to the bitter end. I'm sure right now his base is loving that he's fighting, saying he might not win. It's probably looking good for Joe Biden, but they want Trump to go down swinging. And oh boy, is he ever. Of course, they keep saying the results are in, but they're not in. Real clear politics doesn't even show us the results. It's, uh, I'm sorry, there's no, they show us there's no completed results. As of right now, real clear politics, which is an aggregator of variety of polls and information, does not even have Joe Biden as the projected winner. And they ran an op-ed saying the media should not have called this race. And they ran this today. Okay, maybe the media normally does just call races and then we all just agree that's the case, but that doesn't mean it's the way it always has to be. And this is what I think is happening with Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump is breaking the norms and rules of what the establishment elites expected. I remember I was actually outside this building in D.C. I can't remember where it was when Trump started after he won. He met with leadership of the Republican Party. How much you want to bet? Here's my thoughts, just my opinion. That Trump sat down with the establishment Republicans and other, you know, politicos, and they said, okay, here's the plan. Here's how we normally do things. Here's what we expect of you. And Trump went, no, I'm the president now. I'm going to do things my way. That makes a whole lot of sense if you think about what kind of person Donald Trump is. So thus, the establishment is completely against him. But it goes into what I was saying. You might get uh, Hillary Clinton saying, okay, I've lost. We'll try again later. Of course, instead of trying to challenge the results to the Electoral College, she just accused him of being a Russian spy for four years. Sure, I guess Hillary Clinton went down swinging, but she stayed swinging even when she's on the ground. Anyway, I digress. Let's read more from um, Pompeo. He said, quote, there will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. Pompeo replied with a smile. We're ready. The world is watching what's taking place. 
We're going to count all the votes. When the process is complete, there'll be electors selected. There's a process. The Constitution lays it out pretty clearly. The world should have every confidence that the transition necessary to make sure that the State Department is functional today and successful with a president who's in office on January 20th, a minute after noon, will be successful. Well, here's how NBC News is is, is phrasing it. In appeasing Trump, the GOP toys with a constitutional crisis. First read is your briefing from Meet the Press. They say, in 2016, Donald Trump won Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin by a combined 77,000 votes. In 20, uh, 2020, Joe Biden won those same three states by a combined 214,000. He's on track for, that, for an identical victory, 306 electoral votes. While it's easy to dismiss the refusal of the last gasp of Trumpism, Republicans trying to appease the president one last time before he exits the White House, it also feels close to a country stumbling into a constitutional crisis. Consider, the top Trump appointee at the General Services Administration has yet to recognize the incoming Biden administration, denying it transition funding and personnel access. Attorney General William Barr issued a memo to federal prosecutors to investigate substantial allegations of voter fraud before the election results are certified, which led to the Justice Department's head uh, department's head election crimes prosecutor to resign in protest. GOP senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, both likely headed to runoffs in Georgia on January 5th, called for the state's Republican secretary of state to resign for election failures and mismanagement, but didn't cite specifics. And Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell recognized the Republican Party's victories, but not Biden's. So far, so far, only four Republican senators, Mitt Romney, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins and Ben Sass, have congratulated Biden and recognized the election results. That's it. Trump lost. But most Republicans are still acting like they're afraid of him. Trump lost, NBC says. That's the news. Trump didn't lose yet. Now, this is all about perspective. And that's why I was talking about propaganda and confidence. If everybody just walks away believing, look, we saw the results, Trump lost, then Trump has no ability to fight. But if people are saying, like Mitch McConnell, the election results have not been certified, then nobody lost anything. You see, typically, you know, maybe a Hillary Clinton says, OK, that was the gist of the race. I'm not going to push it any further. But Trump has constitutional and legal access, le- legal means to challenge this. I see some Democrats posting things like, it's so weird that Trump won't concede. It's all going to end soon. Kind of scary that he could even consider it, right? If you underestimate your opponent, don't be surprised when you lose. It's remarkable. I feel like it's a, it's a Joe Biden victory. Even if what Trump is claiming with mail-in, mail-in ballots, trying to disqualify, I think it's 630,000 or so ballots in Pennsylvania, they could go after mail-in ballots based on this argument in many different states. I'm not entirely convinced that the Supreme Court or the courts will uphold this But I got to tell you, it seems extremely obvious. Here's the argument. I talked about it earlier this morning. Bush v. Gore. All ballots must be treated. All votes must be treated equally. If mail-in ballots have less security features and they do, they have no chain of custody. Well, then you got a serious (laughs) constitutional crisis already. And it was because the Democrats changed the rules. The door is open. I've been sitting here reading the news and thinking, how insane is it? that we used to have two different, I guess you call them different versions of reality, as it were. Trump is not that bad or Trump is good versus Trump is evil. But there was an overlap. We agreed for the most part on many key things, but we just had difference of opinions. Now there's no overlap at all. I'm looking at these stories and NBC is like President elect Joe Biden announced a new COVID task force. Then I look over at right wing outlets and they're like, uh, or, or I'll look at real clear politics. The race is not over. I tell you this, this is where things get scary. The media should not have called this race real clear politics and real clear politics didn't call the race. So how is it? AP, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, NBC, CBS, all of these outlets have called it for Joe Biden. Real clear politics has not. And they have said the race should not have been called yet. This is the issue. Real clear politics is an extremely popular website for politicos and people, tra- you know, for people tracking politics. It is not some fly by night, right wing clickbait rage blog where they're like, oh, those dang commies. No, this is a 
particularly prominent news aggregator and political website tracking polls and creating an aggregate that people cite all the time. The RCP average is considered by many people to be a good standard for averaging out polls. And they're saying, shouldn't have called this one. The point is, you might say that real clear politics is biased. Fine. But if I look to them and they say the race isn't over, I look to NBC and they say, oh, yes, it is. We've got a shocking fractured reality. If you're someone who watches or reads conservative news, then for the most part, the race isn't over. And if you're somebody who watches mainstream media, you can't understand why, why the, the Cheeto dictator won't just stop. He's lost. The results are in. They're not in. And thus, that's why I say propaganda war. Let me show you something. You'll enjoy it. Kevin Roos of the New York Times. I know him personally, uh, not like I'm friends with him or anything. He says, Facebook is absolutely teeming with right wing misinformation right now. These are all among the 10 most engaged URLs on the platform of the last 24 hours per news whip data. The first story, Republican in Michigan goes from loser to winner after technical glitch fixed officials urge confidence in system. That's a true story. A.G. William Barr authorizes DOJ to look into voting irregularities. Absolutely true from Breitbart. Michigan legislature holds rare emergency session to investigate election irregularities. Also a true story. Purdue and Loeffler call on Georgia Secretary of State to resign over election from Breitbart. As you know, that was in the NBC News story I just read. True. Misinformation, says New York Times' Kevin Roos. He is, I believe he's a tech, tech columnist for the New York Times. For the conservatives who are mad about this, yes, it is possible for a story to be factually accurate and for it to be part of a misinformation campaign aimed at undermining confidence in an election. This is the propaganda war. People like Kevin Roos. He once wrote a story about YouTube saying that it turned this unsuspecting conservative into a far right. Oh, wait, actually, if you read the story, it turned a conservative, a a traditional conservative into a liberal. That was the actual story. They were trying to create a narrative about YouTube turning people radical. And instead, if you actually read it, it's like I used to watch conservative videos and then I got exposed on YouTube to liberal videos and now I'm a liberal. That's what they that's the story. On the front page on their website, it showed Philip DeFranco. You know who Philip DeFranco is? Middle of the road, general news show on YouTube, longstanding for over a decade. His show is very, very, I would actually say mainstream in many capacities. In fact, probably a left leaning. They had him on the graphic and there was this, the way they built it was that if you scroll down, it was like I was being radicalized until there was only, you know, one left. And then it shows Philip DeFranco as if to imply he was radicalizing him. They said it was an error and they changed it. And I think they made it Stefan Molyneux or something. But the point is, the New York Times pumps out this fake news all the time. And here's what he says. We need a better word than misinformation to distinguish between totally false stories and true stories that are published in service of an attempt to mislead people. But nobody who studies this stuff is confused by what's happening. These people are lying. This is their attempt at propaganda. These stories are real. There was a there was a politician who thought he lost. He gets a phone call saying, actually, there was a glitch. He actually won by a thousand votes. And he went, oh, I wasn't even going to call for a recount, he says. William Barr is authorized looking into voter fraud. It happened. These things are happening. To act like they're not is just irresponsible. We also have, in terms of general warfare outside of this, the Lincoln Project is going after the people supporting Trump in this regards. This is why I say war. But let me read. The Lincoln Project received a tweet. These are the anti-Trump Republicans. Go after clients. Hit them in the billings. The Lincoln Project published the contact information and email addresses for two lawyers working for the Trump campaign right now to sue for a legal path to victory. The Lincoln Project says make them famous and publishes their, well, it is public contact information, but they directed a brigade that got tens of uh, 10 plus thousand retweets, I think 12, 12,000 or more. Now they're saying they're going to go after the law firm's clients. This is not just about propaganda. That's why I say it's a propaganda war. OK, maybe I'm being hyperbolic, but here's my point. Propaganda has existed forever. We've seen the media lying about Trump. He's, I guess, I think it was Matt Taibbi who said the most lied about president in history. And what do you say? The president that lies the most, but also the most lied about president. Why is that? Because we are in a cold civil war. Ah, I said it. There it is. Look, right now you got the Wall Street Journal. Here's what they're saying. 
no evidence of systematic fraud in U.S. elections, International Observer Mission reports. And this was a team of international observers invited by the Trump administration, issuing a preliminary preliminary report saying high marks to the conduct of the elections. International, however. Well, Trump, I think, isn't he often does things that that hurt him. Inviting these people into it to assume fraud was a mistake, mostly because I don't think there is widespread voter fraud. I just don't. I think there's voter fraud, cheating and irregularity. But I think for the most part, we're looking for impropriety. We're looking at the fact that under Bush v. Gore, the ballots must be treated equally. Mail in votes are not treated the same as in person votes. If Trump prevails in that, he could win. But all that really matters at the end of any kind of political conflict like this is who trusts who. And here's the worrying part. Trump's not going to back down. His supporters won't back down. His media won't back down. And I should say the media that supports him won't back down. And thus, there will be two versions of reality. This is one of the most dangerous things that could possibly happen. And this is what has me worried. I see the left saying there's no possibility for Trump to flip this, and they're saying it because it's a propaganda war. They want to make sure that everyone has confidence in what they're saying. Joe Biden wins. Unfortunately, they jumped the gun and they should not have called this because it has to go to certification. Thus, they've created maximum uncertainty. It may be that we make it to December 14th, the date of Electoral College certification. Donald Trump loses. And I think that's extremely likely. But I'll tell you, it is extremely dangerous, the game the media is playing. And they're playing ridiculous games. Let me show you one of my favorites. Aside from the fact we're all freaking out out about Mike Pompeo, Vice.com writes, there's a hidden message for Trump in Boris Johnson's Joe Biden tweet. (gasps) I kid you not. They said the words Trump, second term and future are just about visible in a graphic tweeted out by Downing Street on Sunday. Did Boris Johnson of the UK send a secret message to Trump saying you're going to win? There's going to be a second term. (laughs) So Boris Johnson puts out this image. Congratulations to Joe Biden on his election uh, as president of the United States and to Kamala Harris on her historic achievement. The US is our most important ally, and I look forward to working closely together on our shared priorities from climate change to trade and security. Prime Minister Boris Johnson, 10. Okay, but if you do a kind, if you strip out the, 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 the back portion of this image, you can see faintly Trump second term and future. There's a really simple explanation for this. They were preparing a generic message regardless of who won, and they had that ready to flip, I suppose. If it was going to be Trump, then they could just go boop, 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 boom, it's for Trump. If it's for Biden, boop, 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 it's for Biden. And they accidentally published it. And now the media is vice in their desperation for some kind of click or sensationalism, saying it's a hidden message. It's not necessarily the same thing as I was referring to before. But the idea is we're polarized. People are believing crazy things. It's not unique to the right. The left will tell you that the right believes in crazy conspiracy theories and there's no evidence of fraud. Not true. You can clearly look it up. We've got multiple affidavits, multiple witnesses. Then there's impropriety afoot. If you look to the left, you will see the same exact kind of loot, like uh, conspiracy theories. I'm seeing people post like, look at these, 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 these applications went out. There's too, many, there's too many people on the registration. There's, there's so many dead people who are registered to vote. And it's like, yeah, that's normal. That, that's why we do voter roll pur- purges. On the left, they say, Boris Johnson is sending secret messages to Donald Trump. The reason I'm talking about this in the context of this video, I do not believe there is a scenario in which regular people just say, okay, we're done fighting. The culture war and the election, it's all over. Donald Trump lost. Joe Biden put her there, pal. Handshake. No. You know that guy from CNN? I can't remember his name, but he's got like the moosed up quaff. Like, you know, he's the, he's the uh, it's like graying hair. I can't remember his name. Anand, maybe. But he was saying, you don't seek unity with your abuser. We're also hearing calls for truth and reconciliation commissions. These people are not going to be satisfied by Donald Trump walking with a smile, patting Joe Biden on the back. We are in some kind of cold civil war. And I didn't make that up. It was some Princeton University who hated uh, university, uh, university professor who hated Trump who made that up or who claimed it. I'm telling you, man, right now we are in a major propaganda wave. 
The media doing what they do says the results are in. We've projected it. I'm not saying there's a conspiracy. I do not believe the journalists are like, we better write that Joe Biden won to convince Trump supporters. I'm saying they all believe it. And they're looking at Trump and Trump supporters going, these people are crazy. Why are they saying that Trump didn't lose? Why won't Trump concede? And then you're saying on the other side, they're like, look at all this fraud. But as the left refuses to acknowledge the fraud, and there's ample evidence of it, I'm not saying it's widespread or it's even going to change the outcome. I'm saying there's sworn affidavits. They exist. They ignore it. Thus, there is no shared reality at all anymore at the most important time ever. I don't know what's going to happen at all. But I can tell you right now, Donald Trump is refusing transition, refusing to concede Trump blocks cooperation on transition because there isn't one. Or as Mike Pompeo says, it's going to be Trump. The reality is the, the, the real world is that there are conflicting worldviews. And if you are someone who says, I know that they, you know, are stealing the election, they. I know it's vague on purpose. It could refer to Biden or Trump. But if you're someone who says that no matter what side you're on, you will not believe the other side didn't. So for Trump supporters and for people who hate Trump, they're going to be saying quite literally verbatim the same thing while pointing the finger at each other. And that's how the clash starts. I don't know where we're going. I think it's very it's very possible that Trump is just raising money. He's going to file his legal challenges. They're not going to pan out and it's over. But you hear Mike Pompeo with utmost confidence, there's going to be a second Trump term. I have to wonder with Bill Barr investigating, is this just a lull? You see, the mistake the Democrats are making right now is underestimating the right and Trump and his supporters. They're putting out all these messages of president elect Joe Biden and and that's it. But what if in a week we actually start to see results? Trump is blocking transition. He's not just sitting around. Maybe Maybe the left is right. Maybe the Democrats are right. Maybe the media is right. It's all a temper tantrum. The point I'm trying to make is, while I certainly believe it's going to end up with a Joe Biden presidency, there is a very, very, we are in a very, very dangerous period right now where you have two disparate realities. And how do you resolve that? I don't know because nobody wants to accept it. The left is just saying, that's it. The race is over. The results are in. The results are, they're not in. They're quite literally not in. If I like, I'm, I'm going to make sure I stress this point. Sorry for me repeating it, but go to Real Clear Politics live election results. They haven't called anything. Check this out. Real Clear Politics corrects Giuliani on Pennsylvania claim. This is false. Giuliani said Real Clear Politics just took Pennsylvania away from Biden and made it a toss up. Tom Bevan of RCP says this is false. We never called Pennsylvania and nothing has changed. That's right. If you're a regular American, you don't read a whole lot of news and you log into Real Clear Politics, you'll see that there's no victor. There's no one won the presidency. If you're an urban dwelling liberal, you were dancing in the street because NBC told you Joe Biden won. But the certification hasn't happened and legal challenges are happening now. It's premature. I'm worried about what's to come. I'm worried about what happens no matter who wins, because like we've said for a long time, no one will accept the results. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastnews. It is a different channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.